Bears earlier today over North Carolina. And now we finish off this Sunday in the capital city of the Palmetto State with SEC softball. And Kiki Malloy leads off game number two of this series. Kiki takes a strike. She was able to extend her hitting streak to 18 games, but did so last night in the 10th inning with a bunt base hit. Utilizing that speed to her <laughs> advantage. She saw that the infielders were playing a little bit further back, decided to drop that bunt, and was able to leg it out, and with the missed throw, made it all the way over to second base on that bunt in the 10th. So the athlete that leads Tennessee in career home runs, and then probably is going to be at the end of her career leading most offensive categories. Laid down a button, kept the hitting streak going. And Tennessee is the only unbeaten team still in conference play, in, yeah, or four and Kiki, you want to say that uh, a lot of the lefty slappers go with the term that they're a triple threat. I guess we could say that Kiki is a dual threat coming from the right side. Can we coin that term this weekend? And she can do that right there. If it stays fair, but it will not, it goes foul over by the beach volleyball court. It's incredible the numbers that she's put up in those 17 games too, just batting over 500. <laughs> Six home runs, 14 RBI, 12 multi-hit games. Talk about production right there at the top of your order for the Lady Vols. Coming off a 25 homer season last year. You know, I, I don't think people recognize how difficult that is. She had 170 at bats. Now, granted, there were 51 walks. So plate appearances, she had quite a few more than that. But 25 home runs in 170 at bats. And sprayed all over the field, too. That's what impressed me the most about her last year. Check swing. And it takes ball four inside. There is Karen Weekly, head coach, 23rd season for her has been uh, solo head coach what now for it's been three years now the time goes pretty fast has it been that long I, I don't know I had former co-head coach and her always current husband Ralph is in attendance tonight he's moved spots a couple of times yeah. we're keeping track on him when he first pitch swing he rolled out to third Zoe Leno juggles and can't make a throw and Zoe Leno getting the start at third base in this one it's two on, nobody out. So it's actually Denver Bryan, it looks oh. like, over there. They made a switch yep. in the lineup right at the start of the game. So Denver Bryan over at third base playing well back behind third. Was going to have the out at first easily, but you're right, Mark, on that transfer, just not able to grip it firmly enough with that hand. Now two runners on board already for Tennessee. Yeah, Denver was scheduled to be the DP. There was a chance that... Uh, Beverly Smith may make, have made the switch at the plate. Nonetheless, two on, nobody out. And the Lady Vols with McKinney Gibson at the plate. A very rare off night with the bat last night for McKinney Gibson, 0 for 5 with four strikeouts, which ended a nine-game hitting streak for her. Last year, an all-SEC first-teamer. Right side on one hop. That's gobbled up by Carly Shelton. Gets the out at first base. Malloy and Pooney do each advance 60 feet. And Lady Balls have second and third with one out. Is a productive out for McKenna Gibson. Yeah, still not able to get good barrel on that pitch and a lot of credit to Elena Vodder for where she's able to spot those drop balls making sure that McKenna Gibson could not get her hands extended on that swing but either way like you said Mark a productive out moves both runners into scoring position now for Riley West who found herself back into the lineup for Tennessee this week after an injury set her out for a few games yeah, it was 0 for 2 but had a couple of walks in yesterday's Game one matchup. You know, she came back with a flurry, didn't she? The, uh, the DP at Western Carolina in her midweek game. 
you often wonder with hitters when they haven't been in the game consistently how quickly it's going to take for them to get their timing back up in the box. And the very first swing that she took, she smoked a line drive straight back up the middle. I said, well, that answers my question of how, how long it's going to take for her to get her timing. Drives that deep down the right field side, but it slices foul. And it's about 10 feet to the right of the foul line up against the outfield fence. One thing to note already early in this game is you're seeing Tennessee making an adjustment knowing they're going up against a Botter's drop ball down in the zone. We've seen them hit a couple of foul balls deep down the right side that are up in the air. Typically when you're facing somebody like Botter, you're going to see a lot of ground balls, whether it's in foul territory, fair territory. So Tennessee intentionally trying to get underneath. Got in on the hands there and West sends it to left field. Jones comes in to make the catch, tagging as Malloy. She's going to score easily. And over to third base goes Ada Pooney. So a sack fly for Riley West, her 20th RBI. And it's Tennessee who scores first in this game. We've seen Tennessee be very aggressive on these tag ups at third base already in both games of this series. Fly balls haven't made it very deep out into the outfield, but they're utilizing their speed and trying to take that chance and taken off from third base. Well, it was South Carolina that scored in the first inning last night's game which ended a long consecutive scoreless inning streak for Carlin Pickens. But that proved to be the only run that Carolina would score in the 2 1 10 inning loss as Sophia Nugent playing left field. Out of the center field Blampede went back now comes in a few steps and makes the catch to retire the side. Tennis this year is that off speed pitch to try to keep people off balance. Riley Blampede, the center fielder, leads off. Plain umpire Jill Poole hesitates for just a moment. Check in with Kiki Malloy, make sure she was ready to go out in center. And Pitch outside from Gotchel. I think that first pitch kind of came quick and surprised all of us. Well, that, that's the other thing I need to add to my Peyton Gotchel scouting report is how quickly she works <laughs> in the circle. She does not waste any time at all. She gets right on that rubber and fires the pitch. We will be very surprised if the uh, the new pitch clock <laughs> comes into effect in this game, at least on Gotchel's side. I don't think she's ever needed it in her career. She <laughs> definitely doesn't need it again this year, but it's there just in case. Blampede lines one towards center field, playing on a bounce there by Kiki Malloy and Riley Blampede. He's off the bottom of the first for the Gamecocks with a base hit. Manning in the three hole. Jen Cummings. Got a couple of hits in last night's game, and I'll tell you what, hits were hard to come by in that one. Yeah, the pitching was outstanding in game one, and even talking to Coach Bev Smith before this ball game, she said they just needed that one timely hit when they had people on board. Right fielder Carly Henderson batting in the two spot. One for four, the opener of the series last night. Strike on the outside corner. It's interesting to talk really to both head coaches today about game one last night. Even being on the losing side last night, Beverly Smith, the head coach of the Gamecocks, acknowledged, hey, that really was a high-level game. It was a fun game for the fans, even though we lost. And the strategy involved. Runner goes, Splampede, good throw, got her. Julia Katsoyanopoulos gunning down Blampede. Caught stealing for the first time in three tries this year. Katsoyanopoulos has such a quick transfer back behind the plate. She drops down on her knee, throws it to Destiny Rodriguez, who's positioned perfectly, coming over from the second base side, places this tag. After review, the call is upheld. We have an out. All right, call upheld. It is an out. So nothing on the video review was indisputable enough to overturn the call on the field there. And such a quick transfer, like I mentioned, from Katsoyanopoulos back behind the plate, too. That's not easy when you've got a left-handed batter in the box, so her body is blocking first base and seeing that runner take off from first. 
but a really quick snap throw down to two. Looked like Henderson went around, and according to third base umpire Destiny Robinson, she did. It's a three ball, two strike count. And the first strikeout for Peyton Gottschall. Two down. Gottschall just stays right on that outside part of the plate to Carly Henderson. A bit of a hesitant swing from Henderson, who's been swinging a really good bat recently. Almost looked like for a second, maybe she tried to stop, knowing that that pitch was way out in the other batter's box. But Gottschall already starting to get some momentum out there. Here's Jen Cummings playing first base. Two for three. With a sack fly RBI in the first inning of yesterday's game. The only run South Carolina also added a double later in the game. We're going to get him strikeouts. The first save of the season after getting three last year. Pumps the outside corner on that 2 0 pitch, 2 and 1. You can even tell by Katsoyanopoulos' reaction back behind the plate, too, that she liked the location of that spot. It looked like a backdoor curveball outside to the lefty Cummings. Ball is driven towards center field, and Kiki Malloy trots to her left, and in dead center makes the catch to retire the shot. You know, you can't say they haven't missed a beat when you lose a pitcher the caliber of Ashley Rogers, but. Their pitching is still just really, really outstanding. And that's the turnover you want year after year as you continue to improve with your pitching staff and you get some young pitchers in and you develop them when they're freshmen and when they're sophomores. That way, by the time that they're juniors and seniors, they're leading the team in helping teach the younger pitchers that you, again, have coming into your program. Destiny Rodriguez takes outside. Six, seven, and eight part of the order here for Tennessee, who scored an unearned run in the top of the first inning. Destiny now in her sophomore season. Another one of those players who's just taken a big step from year one to year two. And that big game-winning home run against Baylor to open up this season. And it seems like it's really sparked the confidence in her bat ever since. She's really had some lengthy at bats already in this series where she's fouling off pitches left and right. You can tell that she's got that fighter mentality up in the box. Five home runs on the season. Number five came on Wednesday in their midweek in Western Carolina. Lined into right field, took that the other way in a sharp single for Destiny Rodriguez, first Lady Vols hit of the game. When you look at her career as a whole and what she was able to accomplish. Tennessee's put the leadoff banner on base for the second straight time to start the game. And Taylor Panel scored what proved to be the game winning run in the 10th inning last night. Swings and Sends one to shallow left. Kiana Jones. Kiana Jones makes the catch and then a strong throw trying to double up Rodriguez. <laughs> they just showing off the arm there. She's got one in left field. Got a laugh at it. Destiny Rodriguez at first base, too. Maybe not quite expecting the throw to make it all the way over there, but yeah, just like, keeping her in check. Yeah, she did what? Making really? sure she's staying over at first base. <laughs> Katsoyanopoulos, ground ball to third, Bryant to second, out to first, safe. And we get the lead runner, Rodriguez, and Katsoyanopoulos will run at first with two outs. First ground ball that we've seen off of the bat of a lady ball in quite a while. Katsoyanopoulos hits this one over to Denver Bryant, a quick turn over to Carly Shelton at second base. But just not able to get that throw over to first in time for the double play. Transfer Laura Mueller batting in the ninth spot. 
Eddie Ball's shortstop after a couple of seasons at Middle Tennessee State. She was first team all conference USA last year. Monster numbers. That's going to go foul. It's got a lot of distance, but plenty foul. Talking to Coach Weekly leading up to this series and specifically about Laura Mueller. She said she's always had the pop. She's been on quite a tear recently. Been seeing the ball extremely well, but it's the whip that she's able to generate with her bat that allows her to get the amount of power that we just saw on that fly, fly ball down the foul left field line, excuse me. And there's been several tweaks to her swing too. When you look at her swings from last season and compare them to this season, quieted down her lower half just a bit, but keeping that whip in the upper half that allows her to get all that power. Slowed her bat down there and a high pop fly to shallow center. Riley Blampede makes the catch to a tight Peak matchup and a lot of excitement coming off of the heels of that big win for South Carolina coming into this series. And Jones and foul ground right near the line. That's caught by Sophia Nugent. And Miller and Gibson also in the vicinity, but Nugent took control and made the catch right near the line. Almost looked like it started to carry a bit more into fair territory than she was expecting. She came up with it right at the last minute. And Zoe Leno. Not a lot of at bats for her this season, 33. Leno's typically used as a pinch hitter coming in off of the bench, but I wonder if Coach Bev Smith possibly likes this lefty matchup going up against Gottschall, knowing she likes to go to that curveball on both sides of the plate. That was the case last night. She entered the game as a pinch hitter, stayed as the DP, batted twice, 0 for 2. Veteran player, senior, in her fourth year in the program. Tennessee, as you see, is 4 0 in conference play. Look at the bug, and Carolina is 0 4. They have lost some heartbreakers. Some really close games that they played, and, and even like Coach Bev Smith said about last night's game, it's just that timely piece of hitting. They are an offense when you look top to bottom, they don't put up a ton of home run numbers, so they're going to have to string together those quality at bats, and oftentimes that can take a little bit longer to score a bunch of runs, but she feels like they're just knocking at the door. They are this close to really busting open and having quite a bit of a drastic difference in record with just a few timely hits sprinkled in here and there. And Leno walks first walk Canada. And Daniels approach today as well. Denver Bryant one for five. And a single and a run scored in yesterday's two to one ten inning loss. The first series at Texas A&M for South Carolina lost the first game three nothing, then lost two to one in ten innings, and then lost two to one again in regulation. Got swept in that series with two one run losses. And of course, a one run extra inning loss in ten here last night to Tennessee. Their pitching's doing a really good job of keeping them in ball games. It's just a matter of their offense being able to string something together, and that's why you're seeing some constant changes in the lineups, too, for South Carolina, just trying to find that right mix. Down the right field side, long run. It's going to land foul out of reach of Taylor Panel. See a big change, too, with Carly Henderson moving up into the two spot today, just trying to find those right pieces to put together with this offense. A lot of players that have good bat to ball skills, maybe not as much power, but still able to drive the ball into the gaps, just trying to figure out where these players are going to work best in those lineup positions. That would be the biggest discrepancy when you look at the offenses of these two teams, Madison. 
South Carolina as a team, 13 home runs on the year, and you're looking at what 40 plus for Tennessee at this point. And strike three, paints the outside corner as Gottschall. It's her second strikeout, two outs. And the pitchers in this series are just phenomenal, moving the ball throughout the strike zone. I love this curveball going away to Denver Bryant here. You can see the late movement on this pitch, too. A nice frame by Katsoyanopoulos back behind the plate. It's a great looking pitch for Gottschall. Thirty pitches so far for Peyton Gottschall. Harley Shelton, left-handed hitting second baseman. It was interesting to talk to both head coaches about last night's game. Number one was Vauder not starting and not pitching in that game, which really seemed to throw the Tennessee offense for a loop, at least through the first three or or so innings in that game. And I think it's because it's a completely different approach that you have up at the plate for somebody like Vodder versus Sage Marjetko, who likes to work the ball more up in the zone. Even Jory Hurd likes to work the ball with upspin up in the zone. And then when you're preparing for somebody like Vodder, who's primarily down in the zone, you have to very quickly shift your hitting approach. And it sounds weird to say, even though South Carolina lost the game, the move to not throw Vodder did what Beverly Smith wanted it to do. It was successful in that regard. Yeah, she was wanting to play matchups too, and it did look like it caught Tennessee a bit by surprise just by the way that they were swinging the bat throughout the start of that ball game. But I'm pretty sure coming into today, they had a pretty good idea of who they were going to be facing in the circle in game two. Couple of Ks in the inning for Gottschall. That gets Shelton to retire the side. She promised she would not lay down last Monday night, and she didn't. Which happened, by the way, to be five years to the day that she had been mic'd up when she did lay on the ground with the game-winning hit that, that wound up winning the game on her mic'd up Monday. It was Aaliyah Andrews, wasn't it, that ran it past her, so her yeah. stop sign? Yeah. Exactly right. So looking forward to that tomorrow night for the finale of the series. And top of the order here for Tennessee. Quickly. Water ahead, no balls, two strikes. He worked a walk to begin the game and would score in the first inning. And a sack fly from Riley West. That has been the lone run so far tonight. It's just, it's just <laughs> insane. It's just not even fair at some point, right? When you're outscoring opponents by yourself. <laughs> now, granted, you're getting some help from teammates, but still. You can see throughout this at-bat, too, Vodder really working back and forth on the plate, working hard inside on the hands of Malloy, making sure she can't get extended and then trying to extend to expand that strike zone on the outside part of the plate, seeing if she can get her to chase. A lot of downward movement. She's been mixing in the rise ball every once in a while. I'd imagine it's probably not getting as high into the zone as she would like it. They're ending up right about belt high, but because they're moving in a different direction, you're seeing that pitch jam up some of these right-handed batters. Slow tap, Vauder fields her position and makes the underhand toss to Cummings and they get Kiki Malloy. And even with that swing right there from Kiki, you could tell she was almost caught in between whether or not that ball was gonna move up into the zone like a rise ball or if it was gonna drop down into the zone like a drop ball, which is what she saw on that pitch. Kiki who has an 18 game hitting streak riding, 0 for 1 so far with a walk. Ball one to Zeta Pooney. Zeta reached on an error back in the first. You know, talking with Karen Weekly before the game about Pooney, who the shoulder surgery that she had in the offseason, it involved her throwing shoulder 
And that, that was an injury that bothered her down the stretch of last season. So in their run to the Women's College World Series, Zeta was dealing with that, playing third base, hitting. And Karen told us the story that Zeta's dad just said, hey, look, Zeta, it's going to hurt when you swing, whether you swing hard or not. So just go ahead and swing hard. <laughs> just keep swinging. So, okay, good, good advice, Dad. <laughs> That's exactly what she did, and she put up the numbers that she was able to do last season. And even Coach Weekly said that her numbers this season aren't really indicative of how well that she's been swinging the bat up at the plate. That timing piece is oftentimes the, the hardest thing to get back as a hitter when you don't have the live reps as much in the fall as you would like to see. But she's come through with clutch at bats for them already this season. Playing a bit more first base this year to try to rest that throwing arm. But they need her bat in the lineup. Three two pitch from Vauder. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout for Vauder is her first. First pitch strike. From Elena Vauder to Boo. McKenna Gibson. Elena Vaughter's four seasons at Stanford, won 77 games for the Cardinal, three-time All-Pac-12 first-teamer. In 200 innings last year for them. And in the last three seasons with Stanford, going from the most recent back, 21 wins last year, 25 the year before that, 22 the year before that. She was just a steady rock for Stanford. That's going to get through the hole left side. And McKenna Gibson has her first base hit of the series. Gibson didn't get all of this pitch on this swing. It was a really good location for the drop ball low and inside. But McKenna's just so strong coming from the right side. She's able to muscle this one through the 5-6 hole. You could see the arm side run that that drop ball has on it, too, for those right-handed batters. So not only is it dropping down in the zone, but it's also getting further in on their hands. A nice piece of hitting there by Gibson to muscle that one out into left field. Riley West takes outside. Riley a sack fly in the first inning to account for the game's only run. And was just a day or two ago became a Tennessee Torchbearer Award winner. Now you, Madison, and all the Tennessee folks know how big a deal that is to win the Torchbearer Award, which Kiki Malloy actually that Torchbearer Award, an extremely high honor. Oh my goodness, and she celebrates with a bomb to left field. Home run Riley West, her eighth of the season. And the second straight Tennessee softball, Tennessee Torchbearer Award winner, a no doubter up into the screen in left field, two run blast. You could tell the intentional adjustments from the start of this ball game for Tennessee's offense were to try to get underneath the drop ball, get your barrel underneath this pitch. It actually looks like a rise ball here, but same concept, trying to get your barrel underneath the, these pitches. And she times that one up and drills it out over that left field wall. A big two-run shot for the Torchbearer Award recipient, Riley West. Right on cue, huh? Couldn't have planned it better right there, Mark. <laughs> but it really is so, a, a, a really prestigious award at the University of Tennessee for your academic achievement, outstanding commitment to others, and really somebody who embodies the volunteer spirit. That award goes back to 1931 there in Knoxville. scored so far by Tennessee. Julia Desiderio. Eight, nine, and one part of the batting order for South Carolina. Hits sharply, but foul. It had a hook on it. It went past Gibson, who was drawn in at third base. It landed behind the bag. Three or four feet foul. It sounded like maybe Desiderio got it a bit out in front. 
Pitch on the inside part of the plate, tried to drill it down that left field line, but just a tad early on that swing. Gratchill's been staked to a three-run lead here. And he gets strike three on the outside corner. That's three consecutive strikeouts for Peyton Goschel. She set up Desiderio in that at bat too by throwing the curveballs or the backdoor curveballs on the inside part of the plate and then goes for the strikeout with the curveball moving away from the right handed batter. That's that deceptive spin coming out of her hand. You see it and you think it's going to go in one spot of the strike zone and it ends up in a completely different zone. Brooke Blankenship batting for the first time tonight. Not in the nine hole. We saw a four game hitting streak ended last night going over two. Like a chip fouls it back. Brooke had a 14 game on base streak earlier this season as well. Longest so far this year by a game cut. She's somebody else in this Gamecock lineup that's stepped up quite a bit from last season. When you look at her numbers last year, ended up with a 300 batting average this year, up to 322 coming into this ball game. Look at four consecutive strikeouts now for Gottschall and five in the game. Just really confusing these South Carolina batters left and right by moving the curveball in all different locations. Sometimes it's up in the zone, sometimes it's down in the zone. Tricky for these right handed batters, too, when she's able to mix in that backdoor curveball as well. MP being aggressive, a little out in front. She singled her first time up, but then was caught stealing. Has been the lone hit so far for South Carolina. Some time there. She asked for it. Allowed one time like that during an at bat. Gotcha. Quickly brought that pitch. She walked way behind the circle there, and I was watching the pitch clock, and it was getting close to 10. She just quickly got the motion going. Whack towards right center field. Aloy will chase that to the fence. Lampede standing at second with her eighth two base hit of the season. And she has both Carolina base hits now tonight. Hard hit balls to center field for both of them, too. This is a backdoor curveball. Look at the way that she gets her hands inside of the pitch. So this is that level of anticipation, anticipating that that curveball is going to move back on the outside part of the plate. So she keeps her hands inside and drives that one into the right center gap. A really nice piece of hitting, of two out hitting for Riley Blampede. Riley Henderson takes a ball. We were talking with Coach Smith about Riley Blampede the other day. She said that Riley is one of the players that keeps a notebook in the dugout about their at bat. So I'm sure she will go back, write what pitch she hit off of Gottschall, and that she hit it to right center, and that it was a double. And what she can do when you keep track of those things, whether it's physically in a notebook or even just mentally, is you can kind of anticipate what you're going to see in your next at bat, too, especially when you hit it hard off of the wall like that. You can kind of guess, hey, all right, she's probably not going to come back in that same location. I'm probably going to see something different. Maybe you go up there and you take a chance to sit an off-speed pitch since you haven't seen that yet from Peyton Gottschall today's ball game. Maybe you see that in that bat number three. But those are the things that she's taken it upon herself to write them down into a notebook so that she can keep track throughout the ball game. I don't know what kind of learner you are, Madison, but I'm, I'm more like Riley Blampied. I, I, if I write something down, it helps me learn stuff. Uh, you can see all of my handwritten notes yeah. in front of me. <laughs> I have handwritten notes all over yeah. the place from years past. I like to handwrite everything. 
will pop up out to shortstop. Mueller back just to the cut of the outfield. Grass came up last time. We were talking about the Torchbearer Award, and she promptly hit a home run, yeah. which made for some good TV. How big a deal is this now two years in a row for your program, Kiki and Riley, to win that award? You know, for two softball players to win the highest honor given at the University of Tennessee, it has nothing to do with being an athlete. It's being such a well-rounded student and making an amazing impact on our campus through your servant leadership. And both of them have done that. And I was just overjoyed for Riley. I still get emotional talking about it. And Karen, where do you see that leadership? Of course, they needed that in order to win that Torchbearer Award. But how do you see that leadership translating onto the softball field for you guys this year? Well, you know, Kiki's never hesitated to use her voice from the day she stepped on campus. Riley has always thought and said the right things, but has grown so much in these last four years, being willing to speak up and hold her teammates accountable and herself. You know, she always has in the most honest way. And, you know, her teammates love her. And she's a great example of, you know, she doesn't just do it. She, she talks about it and she backs up her talk. Appreciate the time. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. And Coach Karen Weekly. You know, if I'm a head coach and an award that's considered the highest student honor at the university is given to two of my athletes back-to-back -back years, I'd be pretty proud of that myself. Oh, it's a huge honor just in the University of Tennessee. And the description that I love the most about the recipients of that Torchbearer Award is Torchbearer reminds all students that those who bear the torch of enlightenment shadow themselves to give light to others. And you just heard Coach Karen Weekly talking about what Riley West and Kiki Malloy mean to not just the university, but specifically with this team and this program and the consistency that we've seen from this team this year. That is ripped foul down the left field side. Destiny Rodriguez, who had a base hit her first time up, leading off the top of the fourth. Water gets ahead, the ball and two strikes. What have you seen so far from Elena Vaughter tonight? I think she's had to change her game plan a little bit, looking at the way that Tennessee was swinging the bats in the beginning part of this game. Of course, she's going to throw the heavy dose of drop balls, and we're going to continue to see that pitch. But she's mixing in her off speed a bit more. We just saw one there throwing for a ball low and away to Destiny Rodriguez. I think we're going to continue to see that rise ball just a bit more in this ball game too. It's all part of that mental chess game between the pitchers and the offenses and how each of them try to get an edge over the other one throughout the ball game. That's golfed into center field. And Destiny Rodriguez right there at that swing, looking for that pitch down. And you can tell by the swing path too. She's looking for the hunt or the drop ball. She's hunting that pitch. And there's a lot of swings in this Tennessee lineup that are more tailored to pitches down in the zone. Of course, Destiny Rodriguez being one of those swings. And we saw a great example of how she's able to get to those pitches low and inside by the way she keeps her hands inside to drive it out to the grass. But that's why I think you're going to have to start to see Elena Vodder work those pitches up in the zone a bit more just to keep them honest so that they don't go up there and specifically hunt those drop balls. Amanda Allen's running at first base for Rodriguez. Taylor Panel, the ball's hitter. Glide to left field in the second inning. In the panel in her sophomore year. Played in the opening couple of weekends of the season last year before suffering a season ending injury. So only played in seven games a year ago. Even in just seven games, six of which she started last year, showed the flashes as a freshman of what kind of player she was going to be. And Now getting an opportunity healthy in her sophomore year, native of Illinois. We talk about all the movement on Vodder's drop balls. It makes it really difficult to bunt against those types of pitches as well as we just saw Taylor Panel trying to lay down a sack bunt maybe. 24 balls to 36 strikes so far for Vodder. And Panel goes down looking. 
for Waters, second strikeout of the night. Pulls the string on the off-speed pitch, so it comes out of her hand looking like another hard drop ball. Looks like it's going to be a ball low and outside. And by the time it's too late, you realize that that's a changeup that has just gone by for strike three. There goes the runner all in the throw to second in time. Got her. Julia Desiderio runs down the pinch runner all in for the second out. How about these catchers in this game alone? Such quick snap throws down to second base. A really nice tag applied by Carly Shelton at second base as well. Perfectly positioned, her feet straddling the base, so she's leaving the front part, the leading edge of the base open for the base runner. A nice job by these defenses cutting down those runners. Katsoyanopoulos gunned down Blampede in the first inning for Tennessee. So both catchers gunned down a would-be base dealer tonight. There's Katsoyanopoulos. And of course, Desiderio, the counterpart catcher. By the way, those are two of the more Mediterranean area last names you're ever going to find. <laughs> Desiderio and Katsoyanopoulos. Julia Katsoyanopoulos, her dad, Chris, is from Greece. Mom, Juliana, is from Italy. And she just worked a four-pitch walk. That is the second walk given up by Vauder in the first since she walked Kiki Malloy to begin the game. Two-out base runner, the shortstop Laura Mueller. Dozen homers last year for her at Middle Tennessee State. She has hit six so far this year for Tennessee. Three of those came in one game against Missouri State. Back on March 8th in game one of a doubleheader. You see what she's done. Last 12. Drives one towards left center field. Does it have enough? It does. Just into the screen. The seventh of the season. And a two run blast makes it 5 0. This Tennessee offense just continues to adjust as Elena Vodder is changing her game plan in the circle. This is another one of those change ups coming out of her hand that Laura Mueller is able to get barrel around this pitch and she is so strong, she has so much whip with that barrel that she drives it out beyond that left field wall to extend the Tennessee lead and there's the money flying again in that lady ball dugout. She's primarily upspin, likes to work that arm side of the plate. Goes up, she goes down. Has a couple of different speeds of changeups as well. Lineup turns over again. Kiki Malloy up. 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Second time through the order for the Lady Vols against Vauder was a much different story than the first time. Just completely adjust it to, and that's the name of the game. You want to adjust to what the pitcher is throwing you, what they're getting you out on. Go up there and hunt that your very next at bat, and Tennessee completely took away that drop ball. Bounced out to third base. Bryant fires across, off the bag, safe. When we do get to the end of the inning, we'll remind you that Beverly Smith's going to be our guest on the other side. Malloy reaches what is the second error of the game. When he takes ball one. I'll be interested to see if Kiki Malloy decides to take off here too with Already a couple of runners being thrown out in this ball game. She has so much speed. 
Will she take a chance? Testing the arm of Julia Desiderio. Desiderio paying close attention, looking her back to the base. Kiki 19 of 21 in steal attempts this year. Forty stolen bases for Kiki last season. Took off on that pitch, but a foul ball off the bat of Zeta Puni. Safely stolen 93% of career bases, 135 for 145. I'd say she's uh, doing some damage on the base paths. That hitter, Puni, took that near the elbow when a hit by pitch. We'll add another base runner for Tennessee. Marjeko not afraid to work the inside part of the plate to these right-handed batters, and that pitch just got a bit too far away from her. Looked like a rise ball trying to get it up and underneath the hands of Puni, and it just hits her right on that left elbow guard. Jackie Kirkpatrick this time going to come off the bench to run for the balls. Kenny Gibson will be the seventh hitter to come up here in this top half of the fourth for Tennessee. Really does get you get the feeling that there is no break in this Tennessee offense and it's because of numbers like this McKenna Gibson 432 with runners in scoring position this season. Which is about 50 points higher than her season average. I got there by Desiderio. Loy reached on an error to extend the inning. Pooney hit by pitch. So two on, two outs, two runs in in the inning. On Laura Mueller, two run home run. Freshman Marjetko misses inside. Gibson seen the ball well as of late, too, batting nearly 500 in the last 10 games. And that's even with an 0 for 5 last night. Some uncharacteristic swings from mm -hmm. her last night, swinging at some pitches that quite literally bounced down on the ground before they reached the catcher. Gibson did single her last time up, out in front, swing and a miss, strikeout. Ends the inning. A Tennessee tax on two through the order. <laughs> yeah, Bev, what, 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 what changed uh, that second time through the order for, for Elena? Well, I, I, can't, I can't see the zone. I thought she was throwing some quality pitches there, but, uh, you know, they look like they were uh, doing a good job getting under the drop ball. You know, it's a tough, tough defensive, uh, I'm sorry, a tough uh, Tennessee lineup. Coach, on the offensive side of things, Riley Blampede's hit a couple of balls hard for you guys. What are you wanting to see from the rest of your offense to get a couple of hits like we've seen from yeah. Blampede? I'd like them to get up there looking like Riley in the box, right? Professional AB, she's swinging aggressive, looking good at the plate. Always appreciate the time. Thanks. Thank appreciate you. it, Bev. Okay. Head coach Beverly Smith. She'll have the three, four, and five hitters up. There's Riley Blampede has both hits tonight for South Carolina. First inning single and a third inning double. When she stepped up to the box and the balls that she hit out into the outfield, you just got the feeling that she was on time and hunting those specific curve balls that she went after. You could tell by the bat path, by the way that her, her legs were engaged with her swings, and that's something that Coach is wanting to see more consistently from the rest of the offense going up against Peyton Gonchel now, the second time through the order. So Cummings fly to center field in the first inning. Went off a two-hit game last night. Fifty pitches from Gottschall, who threw 22 pitches in the save, the one-inning save that she got working the bottom of the tenth last night. 
There was another interesting conversation with Karen Weekly about her decision to take Pickens out after Tennessee had taken the lead in the top of the 10th last night. And eventually going to Gottschall, who did get the save. All right there, throws a four pitch walk to Cummings. Second walk allowed by Gottschall. And we mentioned at the top of the broadcast a couple of surprises in yesterday's ball game. We yes. anticipated that we were going to see Elena Vodder getting the start in game one for South Carolina. Coach Bev Smith went with Jory Hurd getting the start yesterday. And then as that game went on, as it went on into the eighth, ninth innings, he just kind of assumed that Carlin Pickens was just going to go ahead and finish out the ball game. But you're right, Coach Weekly decided to make that late inning change, bring in Gotchel for the save. It's Kai Ricks running for Carolina. Pickens had thrown 129 pitches in there. When we talked with Karen Weekly before the game today, she said there were times when her command looked a little sketchy. There were some hard hits against her, and then she'd come back and pitch a little better. And, they ultimately decided to go with Gottschall to pitch the 10. It was the barrel contact that yeah. stood out to Coach Weekly in making that decision yesterday. Definitely wasn't a dip in velocity because you saw that 72, 73 <laughs> miles per hour coming out of her hand consistently all game long from Pickens. Just effortless velocity that she brings. So you're just jogging down to the bullpen right now. Keep an eye on her and see if she actually Starts to loosen up. 129 pitches for her last night. Check swing appealed. Yes. One of the crew chief, Chelsea Clark, at first base. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good call there. Those hesitant swings and those halfway swings right there just tells you how much these pitches are moving, those curveballs are moving. Sometimes she's throwing it inside to the righties. Other times she's throwing it away. Looks like at times she's taking a bit off of these pitches too because there have been some swings by the righties where they're way out in front of these curveballs. Karen Weekly and Coach Megan Rhodes Smith over in the dugout. Into foul territory goes Pooney and Panel. Panel makes the catch. Also had Destiny Rodriguez over in the vicinity as well. But good communication here. A lot of trust right there by Zeta Pooney because it looked like she had a good beat on that ball, but when she heard Taylor Panel calling that ball off in right field, she dove out of the way to make sure that her right fielder had a chance to make the play. So one on one out for Zoe Leno. So only in the second inning. Walked. Takes a strike on the outside corner. Gotcha, by the way, recorded her 1,000th career strikeout in that midweek matchup earlier this week in Western Carolina. Spended three seasons at Bowling Green State University. Second base, Destiny Rodriguez. Gets the lead base runner. And then Ricks on the force out, two outs. And we've talked about Rodriguez's bat a couple of times in this ball game, but I feel like she plays a really solid second base as well. There have been times where maybe she doesn't make the play over at first base, but she prevents the ball from getting out of the outfield. And this is just another example of a smart heads up defensive play by your second baseman to go ahead and get that lead runner out at second base, knowing that she had enough time to get that force out. Denver Bryant 0 for 1. He's back from the ball inside. Denver Bryant, her final season of eligibility. Her first year with South Carolina after three years at Auburn. Mm -hmm. 
Peter Bryant trying to keep the South Carolina fourth alive. South Carolina scored in the first inning of last night's game. Did not score the remainder of the way, the 10 inning game. So they're working on 12 plus innings here right now. Last 12 scoreless. And they've had some opportunities too. They, they've found a way to get people on base. It's just a matter of coming through with that big hit in the gap when you need it. And knowing yourself as an offense too, if you're not an offense that hits a ton of home runs, then don't go up there hunting the home run. That's to the alley and right center field. Let's see if it's going to bring in Leno. Around third, headed home. She'll stumble and fall and now is hung up between third and home throw back to third she is out now that's how things are going right now for the game he needed Denver Bryant came through drove it out into the gap and it looked like she was going to score easily and Zoe Leno just tripped up in between third and home plate just to end the inning it's just when you start to finally get some offensive momentum something like that happens to just completely wipe it out Sage Marjetko had to smile off that pitch that went to the backstop there. <laughs> Sometimes you hang on to the <laughs> off-speed pitch a bit too long and it sails into the backstop, but nothing you can do but laugh it off and go ahead and get ready for the next pitch. Riley West, two-run home run. Her last time up has driven in three. Is now homered in four of her last six games. She knocked in the first three runs of the game for the ball. Sack fly in the first, scored Kiki Beloy, and then a two run home run to left brought in Boo Gibson. Well, Neeler followed that up an inning later in the fourth with a two run shot of her own. That's how it is 5 0 Tennessee here, top of the fifth. Game two of this three game series. Balls won in extra innings last night in 10 2 to 1. And we're on the air here on SEC Network at 7 o'clock Eastern tomorrow for the finale. Riley West reaches to begin the fifth with a walk. Speaking of which, tomorrow night here on SEC Network, it is game three, Tennessee and South Carolina. Jeff Smith's going to be mic'd up for our third mic'd up Monday of SEC conference play. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 6 Central here on SEC Network. That at bat there to Riley West, I think was a prime example of what we briefly heard Coach Beth Smith talking about in our interview back in the fourth inning about some of those calls on pitches maybe not going South Carolina's way. There were a couple in that at bat to, to West that I thought could have been called for strikes. One on the outside part of the plate and even that last pitch that was called for ball four. It seemed like West hesitated even a bit coming out of the box before she went down to first base. So it looks like a bit of a tight strike zone back there behind the dish. Katie Taylor's running at first for Wes. Sophia Nugent's the hitter. I don't know what your experience has been so far this season, and I don't mean to get on umpire because they got a tough job and they do a great job in general, but I think big picture, I think the zones have been pretty tight around the conference. I would agree with that. I definitely think that they seem to err on a tighter zone rather than a wider zone. I don't know every pitcher listening out there is rallying for the wider yeah. zone, yeah. especially with as good as these hitters are. But at the end of the day, I think coaches across the board within the game itself just just want consistency mm -hmm. on, on both sides of the plate. Not just for hitters, but for pitcher for not, excuse me, not just for pitchers, but for hitters as well. You want to be able to make those adjustments to the strike zone as the game goes on. Utilize information that you learn from at bat one and at bat two, two and take it through the rest of the ball game. Jetco falls behind three balls and a strike to Nugent. He's flied to center and popped to short. There's a strike on that inside corner. So 
That's a strike. Runner goes. That's into center field. A stolen base for Taylor. She's up on her feet and headed to third. And that ball rolls away. She's heading home. Here comes the throw. And hey, wait a minute. We're going to have a call here. After all that running around by the plate umpire Jill Poole. Are they going to hit the batter's box? But you can't step out of the batter's box. And there does not have to be contact no. with the catcher and the hitter. Just clogging that lane up by the hitter is enough to get the interference call. So bases empty, two outs. Here's Destiny Rodriguez, who has a pair of hits. Pitch from Sage Marjetko, and it's bounced. May have tipped the glove of Marjetko, nonetheless, playing behind her. Carly Shelton throws her out, and they get Rodriguez for the first time tonight. Ball one to Carly Shelton. True freshman from Lexington, South Carolina. Graduated a year early to enroll in South Carolina. In the air to left field, Nugent now coming in. One gone. So many of these swings for South Carolina, you can just hear it off of the bat. They're getting it right off of the end of the bat, whether that's a change in the timing with the off-speed pitch or just the deceptive movement that Gottschall has on that curveball. They're swinging at where they see it, and by the time their barrels get into the zone, that ball is off of the end of the bat. Gamecocks catcher, Julia Desiderio, 0 for 1. Tennessee has brought Gabby Leach in now to play left field. She made that grab on the ball hit by Shelton. And we'll get another opportunity here. It always happens that way, right? You get entered yeah. into the ball game and you can just count on at least one or two balls being put in play your direction. Yes, the ball found her immediately. <laughs> Twice. Twice. <laughs> Bases are empty for Brooke Blankenship. Brooke's been a season at Florida State, her true freshman year two years ago in 2022. It's always interesting to me to see how hitter swings and their mechanics evolve year after year. When you look at Brooke Blankenship and how her swing, even her stance is different from last season, you'll notice that left foot, how it's starting back towards that back side of the box. Last year had much more of a closed stance. This year, much more of an open stance. New hitting coach for South Carolina this year and coach Jake Epstein. Just interesting to see these coaches implement their swing mechanics on some of these players that have been around for a few years. And so far she's seen a jump in her numbers. We talked about earlier in the game, coming into today's ball game batting 322. She's had a really good eye up the plate as well. Coach Epstein who played baseball at Mizzou and Cal State Fullerton. Been a hitting consultant for the Milwaukee Brewers last six years. Gotchel records the strikeout. 
That is her sixth and sets the side down. Prime example of what you're going to see from Jory Hurd. Likes to work all four quadrants of the zone. A lot more upspin with her pitches. She'll work up and down, in and out. Towering pop fly, shallow left near the line. Lincolnship battling, and the shortstop makes the catch. Long run for Jones coming in from left, but Lincolnship stayed with it as we're getting towards the twilight time here. That wasn't easy. A couple of balls that direction this game that have carried more into fair territory than they initially looked, but outs recorded nonetheless. And Jory Hurd getting that start in yesterday's ball game. I thought she did a really nice job taming this Tennessee offense by utilizing that rise ball. We'll see how quickly Tennessee can adjust to either going after that pitch or laying off of the rise ball up and out of the zone. 43 innings pitch so far in the year. 36 strikeouts in those 43 innings. Heard through the first three innings last night. One hit, one earned run, a couple of walks, four Ks, 52 pitches. And the fact that it was Heard and not Vauder who started the game last night really kind of seemed to get the Tennessee bats off to a slow start. And I like that she's not afraid to work the inside part of the plate either. Oftentimes pitchers, when they see the power numbers in an opposing offense, they'll like to work away, try to throw the ball on the outside part of the plate, but she's not afraid to ride those pitches up and underneath their hands. Golf towards third, Leno now in at third base. That skips by her and into left field. Pretty sharply by Katsoyanopoulos. Let's see how they scored, and she is on with one out. A little surprised that they went with the off speed on that pitch, too. Good adjustment by Katsoyanopoulos. This one looked like it, it took a little bit of a funky hop to Leno at third base. And it is scored a base hit. There's Miller with two run home run her last time up, seventh of the year. You could hear it a little bit in the South Carolina dugout, but that was another one of those pitches yeah, where they're they're wondering I, where that pitch is located. I think we're thinking the same thing up yeah. here in the booth. <laughs> we, we got a pretty good view from right up top here. To me, it looked like a strike on the outside corner, but. Again, you talked about being consistent with it, and it's been a ball tonight. 2-1 yeah. pitch upstairs. Now if I'm a hitter, I'm being even more selective on the outside part of the plate, knowing that it's been a bit tighter for those righties outside. Full count. First inning of work tonight for Jory Hurd, sophomore from the Chicago area. And misses down, ball four. One of the keys for South Carolina coming into this weekend, when we talked to Coach Bev Smith earlier this week, is she said that she wanted her pitchers to limit the free passes and limit the big inning. And right now, with the top of Tennessee's order coming up, a base hit and then a walk. You kind of get the feeling that this is a huge at bat for Hurd here with Kiki Malloy up at the plate. You don't want to let this game snowball here in the top of the sixth inning. Just try to keep your team in the game long enough to give your offense a chance to come back. Yeah, with two runners on base, the power of Malloy, you're one long one away from all of a sudden being worried about being run with. The fact that this might be Kiki's final plate appearance of the game. She is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Came in tonight with an 18 game hitting streak. 
three and one. A dangerous spot right here, and this Adario is going to go out to the circle. It's a good time to call time here for Desiderio showing that leadership. Another close call that didn't go South Carolina's way on that last changeup, bringing the count to three and one. And again, when you're facing somebody like Kiki Malloy, you don't want to just pipe one down the middle, three and one to her, because we, we've seen what happens when you do that. But at the same time, you don't want to continue to give up free passes. So riding that fine line of pitching on the outside edge of the strike zone without letting it bleed too much over the heart of the plate. At a time, work your stuff. Don't try to overthrow. Obviously, you have to adjust to the strike zone back behind the plate, but you just got to do whatever you can to see if you can get a ground ball out here. Put the ball in play. Give your defense a chance to try to get you out of this inning. It's the outside corner, a ball and a strike. Katsoyanopoulos at third, Miller at second, Malloy at first. A little bit low, perhaps. Two and one. It's a big pitch, big call right there. Changes the bat. It, and honestly, if I'm Zeta Pooney, I'm not taking the bat off of my shoulder here. I'm keeping the pressure on Jory Hurd as much as possible. Even more so now. No place to put Pooney without forcing in a run. Say what? <laughs> she was geared up. <laughs> she said, yeah, I know, Madison, I know you're saying to keep the bat on my shoulder, but I'm going to yeah. go ahead and try to send this one out beyond the track and field. And as she takes just a little bit low ball four, so she does wind up getting an RBI on a bases loaded walk, bringing in Katsoyanopoulos. And it's 6 nothing Tennessee. Coach Three Beth consecutive Smith. walks, yeah, going to bring up Bev. And there have been a few pitches that I can think of that could have gone either way. Coach Smith walked back to the dugout. Sometimes you see coaches try to get a word in and that yeah. walk back from the pitcher circle back exactly. to the dugout. Base is loaded for McKenna Gibson. Still only one out. Gibson with a base hit in the third and also scored a run in that inning. Drives it towards center field. Blampede has to chase it all the way to the fence. Miller is in. Malloy headed to the plate. Here comes the throw, and she is tagged out. Side corner strike to Riley West. The sack fly in the first, open the scoring. Hit a two run homer in the third to make it 3 0. Walked in the fifth. Chopper out to second base. Shelton throws in the dirt, but it's dug out by Cummings to win the inning. Tennessee settles for that she has on that curveball to get these outs. And really the only batter that she hasn't been able to figure out yet is Riley Blampede, who's leading off this inning so far today, has a single and a double back up the middle. And she came up there ready to hit. <laughs> we talked about that notebook that she's got in the dugout, taking notes on what she's seen in her previous set bats. I'm wondering if she's going to see that off-speed pitch in this at bat, though. Both of her hits today have been on that curveball. And she does a nice job of getting her hands inside of those pitches. As she try to go for that off speed here to get her out in front. Yeah, she took the ball basically to straightaway center in the first for a single, and then in the third, lined one up the alley in right center field for a double. Top of the order for South Carolina. 
Mark Katsoyanopoulos wants to talk to Peyton Gottschall. Looks like they're talking a bit about that curveball. Maybe missing a bit too much outside. A lot of strategy going on between those two. How much of that conversation is because of what Blampede has done the first two times? I, I would say that yeah. a lot of that conversation yeah. has to do with because Blampede's had a lot of success against Gottschall today. Interesting that they're going away with these curveballs with as well as Blampede does keeping her hands inside. You'd think that that would apply not just for the backdoor curveballs inside, but away as well. 3-2 pitch. Took something off and missed a little bit low. And Blampede on base for a third time. This time, a little leadoff walk. Another one of those close calls right on the outside. Part of the plate to the right-handed batters that probably could have gone either way. I like the spot for the changeup. I like that she went to that off-speed in a full count. Shows you the confidence that she's building in that off-speed pitch, too. Something that she's going to need to continue to use as they go through the rest of this regular season. Ball one to Carly Henderson. Carly with a strikeout and has popped out. Seven pitches so far for Peyton Gottschall. He's allowed three hits, two to Blampede, and the Denver Bryant double, which looked like was going to bring in a run for Carolina, but the run around in third fell down and got tagged out eventually. Seven-game hitting streak on the line for Henderson, and that's going to leave play. Gonna stay one ball, two strikes. <laughs> <laughs> nice catch in the stands, too. Seen some defense on the field, but we see it from the fans as well here in South Carolina. And a round of applause by everybody else, too. Off the end of the bat, popped up behind third, and in the coach's box, Gibson makes the catch. And the temperature is starting to drop, though, as we get later into the night. It I is. wonder if that fan, if if you start to regret actually going for that catch. You mean you got a little stinging on the hands? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Although, I, if a ball did make its way up into the booth, I would for sure go after it. Good, because and I'd I'm pretend, not. I'd pretend that it <laughs> didn't hurt either. <laughs> Ball one to Jen Cummings. And, and by the way, I didn't grow up in the South. It, it's it's not bad outside right now, but for people who are from the South, I, I get it. it. It's a little chilly right now. <laughs> well, I grew up in Southern California, so yeah. this is, yeah, it's definitely yeah. blanket weather. Blankets and hoodies. Oh, yeah, we got lots of blankets out there. Yeah. So it would just be you not having the blanket <laughs> in the stands. I don't know. Some of my coldest nights were like July in San Diego at Petco Park at night. <laughs> man. It, 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 it's pretty cold. Get San close Francisco. to the beach. Yeah, yeah it's just kind of the same way. <laughs> it's a 3 0 count. It's a uh, second walk in the inning. Second time Cummings has walked tonight. South Carolina flipping the script a little bit, too, because Tennessee's been so picky up at the point. Keanu Jones looks the ball one inside. <laughs> the ball's no strikes. Wow. 
blasted but foul down the left field side. How important for South Carolina in a seven nothing deficit this late in the game is a pretty big mountain to climb but just to get the offense with a run or two or something to carry into tomorrow. I think especially after the way that they almost had that run earlier in the ball game, it's really important for them to just try to get a little bit of something going here. And that kind of seems the way that it's gone for South Carolina really the past couple of weeks when they start to feel good up the plate, something happens to where they end up losing the game and some things out of their control. Rolled out to short. Wheeler to second for the force out. The biggest thing I would be looking for here for South Carolina is to string together those quality at bats. They put a couple of together here and there and they'll get some people on base, but then you get some quick outs, maybe some some easy fly ball outs in foul territory or a ground ball off at the end of the bat. It's getting those quality at bats one after another to try to put some runs on the board. Because like we've talked about, this isn't a team that's going to go out there and hit five, six home runs in a ball game. They've got to figure out another way to score. Whether that's doubles, whether that's playing a little bit of small ball, maybe a squeeze here and there, trying to move some people in motion, have some hit and runs going. There are other ways to score outside of the home run, but for them it's just figuring out what that puzzle piece is. The first and third, two outs. That was pitch number 100 for Gottschall. Lampede over at third base. It's the second time tonight that South Carolina has gotten a runner as far as third base against Gottschall. That's it to center field. Malloy right there, though. She barely has to move. Side. Carlin Pickens will pitch tomorrow night. And with Vauder going, uh, what was it tonight? Uh, just basically twice through the order. Chance we could see her tomorrow. That's going to be the big question going into game three is who coach Bev Smith decides to throw because Tennessee seemed to be all over Elena Votter and the drop balls that she was throwing. Like we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of swings in this Tennessee offense that are more suited to pitches down in the zone than up in the zone. Peel. Didn't go one ball two strikes on Gabby Leach batting for the first time came into left field a few innings ago. You did find out some pretty important information about the Leach twins on the squad for yes. Tennessee for the game. Ooh, that's a rocket off the bat of Gabby. Right at the shortstop Blankenship. Gabby, by the way, is uh, 15 minutes younger than Alana. <laughs> And if the name Leach sounds familiar, there have yeah. been several Leach sisters that have played for the Tennessee program, Aubrey Leach and Kelsey Leach, and now Gabby and Alana Leach. And older sister Aubrey is here as a what, grad assistant? Yes, yes, as a grad assistant. Still playing professionally for Athletes Unlimited as well. One of those triple threat lefties in her career. Played a great second base defensively. Kelsey Leach, a catcher. Started her playing career at Texas Tech, transferred over to Tennessee. Very strong softball genes in that family. Yes. Go, Joe, go, Joe. Rodriguez. Had hits her first two times up, rounded out last time. Destiny from Live Oak, Texas, which is on the really the northeast side of San Antonio. In fact, if you're going to drive to Austin from San Antonio on I-35, you'd go right through Live Oak. Two-two count. And not to believe that Peyton Gottschall is going to come out to try to finish this game in the bottom of the inning. Tori 
Kelleher trying to work that off-speed pitch in there, just skips that change up down into the dirt. Rodriguez has been a tough at bat so far in both of these games against South Carolina. Towards third, off the glove of Leno. Trying to get a hot shot going to her left. Rodriguez reaches base for a third time tonight. A lot of top spin on that ground ball. I don't think it's an easy play, but I definitely think that one's going to go down as an error. At least in my scorebook, it's going to go down as an error for Zoe Leno over at third base. Well, it goes down as an error in the official scores book as well. They have uh, put E5 up. So regardless of the official scores decision, your book was going to have E5. <laughs> I tend to be a bit <laughs> harsh in my scoring, I will yeah. say. You're like, why Why we have an official score? I'll tell you what it is. There's a clean base hit. That one's a hit. <laughs> for Taylor Panel. I'm okay. consistently harsh, though, <laughs> I, I guess we could say. Panel gets her second base hit of the series. Had one last night as well. Fly in the top of the 10th last night and proved to be the game winning run. Batting in at Soyanopoulos' spot. We've seen more hard contact in today's ball game. Not a lot of hard contact in yesterday's ball game. Even that sack fly did not make it very deep out into center field, but deep enough to score from third base. Actually, was initially called out on the play at the plate, and then they went to video review and changed that call to safe for that game winning run for the Lady Volunteers. And a strikeout. Service for out number two as Heard records the K. Heard wasting no time with a pinch hitter coming into the ball game. Three straight pitches, three straight strikes. There's Mueller who has a home run tonight. A two run blast to left center field back in the fourth inning. Also a walk and a run scored, so scored twice tonight. Yeah. Heard has followed Marjetko and the starter Vauder in the circle tonight for South Carolina. Two on, two outs. I think uh, the catcher, Desiderio, was having a little trouble, perhaps with the communication system. Got that figured out. One, two pitch up high. That technology new to softball this season. You can only have it on defense, not on offense, but. You can see her fiddling with a earpiece. In her left ear. And now it's a full count. And a free pass handed out will load the bases. And Kiki Malloy, who is hitless tonight, she's been on base with a couple of walks and has reached on an error. It has an 18-game hitting streak on the line. She laid down a bunt in the late the game yesterday. <laughs> and now I'm looking at the corners right now, the infielders. Of course, you respect the power of Kiki, but she's got so much speed, too. Now a little bit different here with the, the bases loaded. You've got to force at any base. Yeah. Loaded up for Kiki Malloy. Takes a strike. Comes back with other solid pitch on the inside corner, one and two.
65 career home runs for Kiki Malloy. Puts it in play back up the middle and the race to second base is won by Carly Shelton to retire the sides. It looks like Kiki's hitting streak will come to an that off speed pitch in South Carolina just hasn't been able to get anything going consistently against her today. He's allowed only three hits two of those by Blampede one by Brian who doubled her last time up but goes after the first pitch and a high fly to right field is caught a panel for the first out actually. That leech out in right field now. Now that is leech at right makes the catch for the first out and there's your breakdown. In the outs. How about ground outs? N not zero. too often that you see a pitcher <laughs> go an entire game with zero ground outs. And that curveball that she has has a little bit of upbite to it that she throws on both sides of the plate. But I just really like the location that she's been throwing and especially to the right handed batters working it inside working it away from them. Working it inside to the lefties as well. She's not afraid to challenge those lefties with that curveball inside. I know our crew is spot on, and I, but I had to go look at my scorecard. It's like, really? No ground ball outs at all? That's, that is really rare. Leach again. Another fly ball out. Go ahead and add that to the tally. Yes. So, no, I, I knew the crew was correct. I just was like, wow. It's one of those things you just have to, like, go back and look at. Like, it does look really? a lot cleaner in those graphics than it looks like in my scorebook currently right now, too. To Desiderio with Gamecocks down to their final out down the right field side and Leach giving it a giving it a look but couldn't get the uh, at least not to this point third straight catch to record all every put out in the inning. Talking about it earlier in the game, but when Gabby Leach entered the game, she got two straight flyouts to her. And Alana her Leach sister. enters the game, two straight flyouts to her in right field. Her sister, that's older by 15 minutes, <laughs> the ball's belted deep but foul down the left field side. Had to also get two quick catches or something. That's kind of <laughs> that's a really it's kind of spooky actually. I don't. Know. <laughs> Now that inning, back in the fifth inning, those two fly balls out to Gabby Leach ended with a strikeout on a curveball. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm really spooked out. <laughs> and. I'm about to drop some knowledge real quick Talking about a profession that deserves more respect Slick nurses on the front line saving lives every day From the ER to the OR they don't play They the heartbeat of the healthcare scene Always there keeping patients clean From newborns to the elderly they care for all Even when the workload feels like a brick wall Nurses in the house making rounds Stethoscope in hand they hold it down They're the heroes and scrubs no doubt saving lives, that's what they're about From administering meds to comforting fears They're the ones wiping away all the tears They'll advocate for you, be your voice in the crowd In a chaotic world, they're the calm never loud Working long shifts, barely taking breaks 
for dedication and passion never fakes through the highs and lows they persevere their compassion shines bright crystal clear nurses in the house making rounds stethoscope at hand they hold it down they're the heroes and scrubs no doubt saving lives that's what they're out there respect to the nurses holding it down in a world where chaos often abounds they're the backbone of healthcare. can't you see without them where would we be nurses in the house making rounds stethoscope in hand they hold it down they're the heroes and scrubs no doubt saving lives that's what they're out there Rhyme.